Hello, I am Santosh Venkatesh of the University of Pennsylvania and you are about to enter the strange and wonderful world of probability, the theory of chance, its historical context and its applications in the modern world. Before we begin in right earnest, it would be good to provide a preamble, a prelude to a theory in which I sketch out for you some of the background, some of the motivations behind the development of the theory. The requisite background for a student to be able to draw something from these lectures. A brief view of the organization of these lectures. And finally, a very, very brief word on the learning and studying of the science of mathematics. So. Without further ado, let me begin by talking about the flowering of a mathematical science of probability. Now, it is very rare in human history that a subject abruptly unfolds at a particular point in time. It is usually a gradual accretion of ideas and movements which results ultimately in a subject developing. And so it is with the theory of chance. The subject itself is of some antiquity. And there have been various points in time where developments have been made. But a key development occurred in the early part of the 19th century with the publication in 1812 of the epochal volume of Pierre Simon, Marquis de Laplace, The Analytical Theory of Probability. Laplace was the foremost mathematical physicist of his time. But in the early part of the 19th century, he had turned his attention to chance and its manifestations in the world around him. You should bear in mind the context of that time. It was a century of turmoil. This was the immediate aftermath of the French Revolution. Society was undergoing great changes, and so was science. Deep foundational discoveries were being made at the very heart of mathematics. And Applications of these were being seen in society around us. Laplace opined that understanding a theory of chance was going to be the key and central endeavor of science in the ensuing century. And he was right in many ways. We shall see as we go along one of the problems that exercised Laplace's imagination. But for the time being, let us move forward a century. The evidence of chance around us that Laplace had seen and had cogitated on had become even more evident in the 20th century. And a little more than a century after Laplace wrote those words, Bertrand Russell, the English mathematician, philosopher, and logician, in a famous lecture in 1929, echoed what Laplace had said, that in the 20th century, the concept of chance, the theory of chance, was going to be the most important endeavor facing science. And he ended up with a wry comment echoing the understanding of that time, that while chance was wild in the world around, and while there were all kinds of calculations being done on the theory of chance, it was not clear from a mathematical point of view what exactly this mathematical object was. You could imagine a mathematician wryly sniggering behind his hand, saying, well, these people doing probability calculations are all very well. They're all very nice people. But really, this is hardly mathematics, is it? Well, this was going to be very shortly resolved. Just four short years later, the Russian mathematician Andrei Kolmogorov set about putting in place a formal mathematical framework for this inchoate theory which had been burgeoning and, and developing over the centuries. And he was successful. Out of this work came a fully formal understanding of a mathematical theory of chance. And 
from this point on, the theory of probability was on a firm mathematical foundation. This is a theory which will exercise our imagination, will occupy us for the next eight weeks. Now, a cautionary word, when historically a mathematical theory develops, there is a tendency towards abstraction. And of course, the idea behind abstraction is to capture key and essential features of a problem without obfuscating it with a lot of irrelevant detail. But there is a danger in unbridled abstraction. In such instances, a theory runs the risk of becoming so esoteric, so specialized, that only a very small group of highly trained specialists can then gain entry into the canon. In such cases, mathematical theories tend to occupy niches, which are occupied by a few specialists who deal with that subject. It is when a mathematical theory hues closer to physical reality, that it sees its largest successes, that it exercises the minds and imaginations of people at large. And Kolmogorov was quite aware of this, as you see in the last sentence that I've quoted for you. Much of his motivation arose from concrete physical problems where chance was wild. And in, as the 20th century progressed into the 21st century, in this, the mathematical theory of chance has been wildly successful. There are few mathematical theories where theory interplays with ribald application so beautifully, so wonderfully. Theory applies applications in form theory, and this interplay makes both the richer. This theory and its rich applications are the subject of these lectures.